this this mission was kept secret uh, for almost 40 years. Hi, I'm Steve Wilson. I uh, was in the Air Force uh, from 1967 to 1971. Uh, stationed at Morton Air Force Base here in California. When I was here in uh, stationed at Norton, uh, I got a doc knock on the door one day and uh, there stood my stepfather. Uh, he was in civilian clothes and uh, he said, come on, I want to take you and my wife uh, to Disneyland. So that was our first trip uh, ever to Disneyland. and. Uh, while he was here, we, we took us out to dinner, and uh, and uh, we had a nice visit. But I I just assumed he was just going on a TDY mission, which he always did. Uh, at that time, he was a, a chief master sergeant in the Air Force, and uh, he said he was just on a layover here, to uh, on his way to. Uh, Southeast Asia. Well, what I found out at the later time was he was here to uh, on a secret mission um, where he resigned from the Air Force, hired on as a Lockheed employee so that uh, they could say that there were no military troops in Laos, which is where he was headed. Thank you. This was 1967. Uh, we had a wonderful visit and then he left and didn't uh, really think too much about it until um, I got a phone call from my mother saying that he'd been killed in Southeast Asia in a helicopter crash, which was untrue also. Uh, it was the cover store story. Um, this this mission was kept secret uh, for almost 40 years. It was kind of ironic that uh, the day my first child, Tracy, was born was the day he was killed over there. So in uh, January of 1969, I got a, a notice to go see my base commander and uh, which was highly unusual, uh, being that I was an aircraft mechanic and working on the flight line and had no dealings with those people. Um, he called me in and said that I was uh, to be sent to the Pentagon for a ceremony. And I, at that time, I didn't know anything about it. And uh, um, my mother, called and said that uh, they were having a uh, award ceremony, that they were awarding him the Air Force Cross. Uh, again, we didn't know that it was anything other than a helicopter crash, so that was strange. Uh, they flew me out to the, to the Pentagon, and where we went into a room and they had a secret ceremony where he was uh, given the Air Force Cross along. There were many dignitaries there. After the, the ceremony, uh, nothing was ever really uh, said about it again. We just um, thought it was a nice thing for them to have done, but we really didn't, didn't question why they did it. Uh, not until Years later, when uh, the author of a book, uh, One Day Too Long, Timothy Cass, Dr. Timothy Castle, uh, contacted me and asked me if he could uh, talk about what, what had happened. So I said I didn't really know a whole lot, but I would be happy to talk to him. And uh, so he was asking me questions, and one of the things he said was, had I had any contact with the Air Force, and I said not since I went to the Pentagon for this ceremony to get the Air Force Cross. And he was shocked. 
He said there's nothing in his records that that uh, said that he had ever even received the Air Force Cross. So after quite a bit of, of uh, research on his part, it was actually uh, put into his records and uh, um, we, we found out through him that uh, I had also been deferred from going to the uh, Southeast Asia when he took this uh, mission he had it put into my records that I would never go and, which was totally a shock to me I, I just always assumed I'd be going to never did Okay, up in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, there was a sergeant who uh, who served at the same radar site where uh, that my stepfather um, was instrumental in, instrumental in building back in the '60s, and uh, he never actually met my father, but he read about what he had done through this uh, book that that was published, and he thought, my goodness, this this man should have gotten the Medal of Honor for these actions. So he contacted his uh, representative in North Dakota, uh, Congressman Earl Palmer, Palmeroy, and uh, that's really how the ball got started. Uh, we actually knew some people who knew Earl Palmeroy, so we contacted him also and uh, he started legislation that had to be, uh, the laws had to be changed because it's, uh, the Medal of Honor should be received within, I believe it was four years of the action. And obviously this is way longer than that. Um, he was, my stepfather was put in for uh, the Medal of Honor at the time that he got the Air Force Cross, but uh, they said that because of where this took place, um, they could not do it because they didn't want the attention uh, that it would bring, the Medal of Honor would bring. Uh, one day my brother was at home and uh, got a phone call and uh, they asked him to hold for the President of the United States, uh, at which time President Obama came on and uh, told Corey that uh, he was sorry for the lengthy delay of this, but he was going to sign it into action and would love to have us come and receive the Medal of Honor. And that was 2010. The true story of what actually happened over there uh, came out after the book was written and uh, he was on a, a hilltop in Laos uh, guiding and bombing missions uh, and they were doing such a good job up there that they kept him up there longer than what what they uh, had anticipated in the beginning and uh, the book was called One Day Too Long because uh, they overran that mountaintop and um, attacked the radar site that was up there. Uh, my stepfather had gone down over the side of a cliff and was huddled into a little cave and uh, he held off the uh, enemy for through the night and was uh, uh, fighting back with an M16 that he had gotten just the day before because they weren't armed when they were up there. And uh, he um, held them off through the night until uh, at daybreak, uh, two helicopters, Air America helicopters, um, came and saw the saw them on the side of the cliff. At which time, he carried the wounded soldiers. At that time, uh, 
my stepfather was not wounded. He had, he had the only one that hadn't been shot. And uh, he carried his captain out and put him on a hoist and put him up into the helicopter and uh, went back for the next uh, two men, picked them up, put them on the, the sling and put them up into the helicopter. At that point he was getting, he went, ran back to the sling and was going to get on uh, to go up into the helicopter when a soldier uh, who was playing dead over on, in the bushes uh, got up and ran to him and uh, he gave him a bear hug and they went up in the helicopter together and it was then that uh, as the helicopter was pulling away that uh, they shot through the bottom of the helicopter and as luck would have it, uh, shot my stepfather and killed him. He died on the way back to the base. Kid that just went through basic training down at Blackland and he said, in fact, he said to Tracy, my daughter, he said, do you realize how much of a hero your grandfather was? He said, we learn about him in, in training. He's on the curriculum for the Air Force Academy. Um, so they learn um, what went wrong with this action and, and uh, the Air Force has changed a lot since then. Uh, those men were put up on that mountaintop with no training, no basic training for uh, weapons or anything like that and that doesn't happen anymore. They're, they're trained. After being in the Air Force uh, growing up, uh, when he was killed, it, uh, we kind of lost touch. I got out of the Air Force, it kind of soured me on the whole military uh, experience, and so I got out of the Air Force. And uh, so we were away for, for quite a while. Well, when we uh, were brought back to Washington for this ceremony, um, you could tell that that Air Force life, that military life, um, is really uh, a close-knit group of people, and they're and they're uh, even to this day, it's even more so than it was uh, back when we were in it. Uh, I'm really proud that uh, they've moved forward and, and there's been quite a bit of change in uh, the respect that the military gets in this country.